All right, on that note, we have another session of crisp talk starting up. We wonder what's going to happen now. <clears throat> that sounds really dramatic, I'm sorry. Um, uh, give it up for Nilesh Trivedi, guys. That's Nilesh over there. So, Nilesh has been programming for about 14 years. 14 years now. He started with C and did Java and Ruby, JavaScript, and occasionally some Scheme and Erlang, like all over the place. Uh, for the last four years, he's been working with Gupshop in Mumbai, and he's quit uh, to work independently. Uh, and he also wants to spend more time on his personal projects and doing more science. Like, yay, science. Mostly aerospace stuff. He likes hacking with the guitar, audio, electronics, and making more music. He's been spending some time figuring out how to do physics simulations in the browser, and he'd like to talk to you about that today. Nilesh, floor's yours. Hello, everyone. Uh, so, I'm, I'm going to talk about interactive physics simulation in the browser. Uh, so, first of all, what do we know about our universe? Well, one, one of the theories that is a string theory, right? The universe is made of tiny vibrating strings. Unfortunately, uh, we don't have string dot vibrate. So, we need, we, we need to go back to Newton, Newton after all. So, why start from scratch? Well, the most important reason was I just wanted to do it for fun. But at the same time, most of the existing physics engines they are more tuned for performance rather than accuracy. They are meant for games where energy conservation is not a strict requirement. Uh, they don't give you very, very low level access to the state as the simulation is happening. So, and I wanted to make an, a, a learning environment for people uh, studying mechanics problem or physics problems. You know? So, this, there were those reasons. <coughs> so, again that f equal to m is the basic fundamental equation that we are going to, going to solve. And it's actually a second order differential equation. So, you have x position and you differentiate it twice with respect to time that is supposed to be equal to your force divided by mass. Now, the first tip that I can give you do not solve, do not integrate twice during the same step, you do not need to. What you can do is you can keep track of velocity and you, you make you turn it into a first order differential equation. So, you are using the last time steps velocity to calcul calculate the position for the new time step and you calculate the forces to uh, calculate acceleration and new uh, velocities. Now, this is a very simple case, there is just one particle, one dimension. When you extend it to uh, rigid bodies and multiple dimensions, what will happen is that instead of x, you will have x, y and theta if it is a two dimensional physics problem that that is the one I have solved and velocities will be your v x, v y and omega which is the angular velocity. In, in, in case of forces, uh, rotations are influenced by torques and instead of m you will have moment of inertia. So, this is the key bit, this is the second tip that I can give you. <coughs> you will have to maintain two representations of the world because it is interactive as well as solving a differential equation. One is your normal uh, data structure whatever you have, you have basically arrays of bodies, you can define arrays of, uh, you can define n number of forces like gravitation or electromagnetic attraction or springs or you can have motors uh, which could be linear or as well as uh, circular and you can define certain joints to connect those bodies. Now, those joints could be uh, revolute joints which allow rotation but, but they do not allow any movement. You could have hinges, you could have axles, you could have uh, ropes and pulleys those, those things. And on the other hand for solution for the solver part you will have to, have to actually maintain a state vector in which all of those variables those x and v they get translated to something like this. So, if you have n bodies you are basically having a 6 n size of a state vector and that is the size of your system of equations that you are solving. So, one way of looking at this thing is either you look of uh, the universe as n bodies n bodies moving in 3 dimensions or you could think of it as one body moving in a 6 n dimensional space that is just one way to look at it because uh, from the mathematical point of view all those uh, values are uh, comparable. Now, how do we integrate? Uh, well, there are a bunch of methods, uh, well known methods. Uh, first is the most simple and um, the, the first one that everybody tries, you know. I, I know the derivative, I just multiply it with delta t and you know I add it to the old value and I get a new value. Well, it is simple, it is fast, but it is also horribly wrong. So, what happens is because you are uh, calculating the derivative at t1 and t2 and you have you know the uh, derivative at t1 and you use it to ex extrapolate the value of uh, x at t2. 
you are getting, you are using a really bad estimate of the derivative. You are only considering the value at the start of the time step. So if you use that solution and simulate, let's say, Earth rotating around Sun, what happens is that those errors, which are of second order, they start getting accumulated and the Earth starts spiraling, spiraling outwards. So this is clearly not, not what we want. Don't use Euler's method. There are much better methods and they are not really that complicated. So second one is uh, Ranjay Kutta method, which is a fourth order method. So you measure the, you estimate the derivative at multiple points of the interval and so you get a better estimate or errors are of fourth order and it's a really, really simple, really popular. So what happens when we use uh, Ranjay Kutta method? Now we have a satisfactory uh, orbit. If you zoom in to this, there is still some errors, but this is fine. In this case, I am using a time step of one day. So one degree is what every time step is. Now, we come to joints. Joints are basically constraints on the movement of bodies. Uh, constraints are used to simulate things like clothes. So the, the one on the right is a cloth or human bodies which are basically limbs that are that allow rotation up to a limit. You can also use it for uh, collision detection as well as contact so and friction. So how do we go about solving constraints? So first of all, what all types of constraints? I have already discussed this. There are anchors which uh, disallow any movement at all of anybody. There are pins which are basically revolute joints. Uh, they allow revolution but no movement. There are sticks which uh, constrain the distance between two bodies to be a fixed length. There are ropes which can uh, uh, support tension but no compression. There are pulleys, there are gears and things like that. So how do we uh, go about solving constraints? So first of all, what, what are constraints doing? They are applying some forces which reject the in illegal movement, right? So we write down the constraint equations. Uh, if you have a, if you have a body moving on a given path, that curve equation of that, that path is the constraint equation. So those are your position variables and we represent them with let's say C. Now second step is we uh, calculate corrective forces which will cancel out all those illegal velocities or acceleration. So there are two approaches. One is we can apply corrective forces and second is we can apply corrective impulses. So forces is the more uh, intuitively simpler one because that's what they are doing actually in the in the real life. But the, it turns out that if you actually use a force based constant solver, your errors are start getting higher because force will correct the velocity in next time step and velocities will correct the position in the time step after that. So in the meantime, the position has become wrong. After this, uh, even even after correcting constraint forces, there are still numerical errors. So your body ha may have shifted to a wrong position. So you need to include drift correction. So you just add extra term which will bring it back to the uh, correct position. And then you apply those forces to bodies to correct the velocities. So uh, the second thing was that, uh, the second point said that uh, you need to calculate the forces using Jacobians and Lag Lagrange multipliers. I'll just talk about that. So first of all, what is Jacobian? What is, it's the derivative of this constant equation with respect to x, y and theta. So of course, you, it will involve partial derivatives. It will uh, look something like this. So the first row is for the first constraint. The second row is for the second constraint. And by this constraint, I don't mean one joint. A joint can have mul multiple constraints, right? For example, a pin. Pin uh, has two constraints. It removes two degrees of freedom. It allows angular movement, but no x movement and no y movement. So you list down all the constant equations, you differentiate them with respect to all the position variables. There are no velocities here, it's just, it's just x, y and thetas. So you, the size of this matrix will be, rows will be number of constraints and uh, columns will be number of bodies into three, if every body is a rigid body. In case of particles, we don't have angles, right? Now, uh, so that's how, that's how we got j, right? We differentiated c and we got j into v. Now because uh, we are saying that constraint equation have always to be satisfied, that means the derivative of c has to be zero. If c was initially zero and c dot is always zero, the constraints will be satisfied. What that mean is, means is that j is actually perpendicular to v. If jv is zero, your j is actually perpendicular to velocity. So j is basically a representation of some force that this constraint is applying to the body to keep it on the path. So if when you think of uh, constant forces, 
intuitively you, it makes sense that forces are on, also applied perpendicular to the velocity and that means that we can write the corrective force or impulse as simply a constant multiplied by the Jacobian right. So, this is one uh, this is something called uh, a principle of virtual work this basically says that force corrective forces do no work they do not add any energy. So, so this is the tip number 3. Uh, avoid force based constant solver they will uh, lead to errors even though it looks like they should not. Impulse based constant solver are better they you can also include collisions in them. So, it is even simpler. So, how do we solve for constraints actually? So, first of all we got the initial velocity then we need to find out P c which is the corrective impulse which will give the corrected velocity which is V c. We know that c dot has to be 0 and we know that impulse is proportional uh, perpendicular to velocity. So, it is j t lambda. So, the solution of these three is basically a simple uh, linear equation which is of the format a x equal to b right. You can use any iterative uh, linear solver uh, most popular is Gauss Seidel solver uh, and once you get lambda you get the uh, p c which is the corrective impulse and then you get you, you use the p c to get the corrected velocities. So, <coughs> how do we handle uh, collision detection and response? Well, there are multiple approaches again uh, when it comes to game game engines they tend to be you know uh, more focused towards performance they want to do it fast. So, they make a lot of assumptions uh, like instead of uh, the the body shape of Mario the character you just assume it as a rectangle and find out whether this rectangle is overlapping another rectangle. So, that is that is the axis aligned bounding box uh, approach you can have oriented bounding box approach mainly you use separating axis theorem which says that two objects are not colliding if you can find a straight line which separates them. It is a very simple intuitive thing. Uh, the one that I have been personally using because I wanted to be more accurate than more uh, fast is the GJK algorithm It's a very famous algorithm. It works for convex bodies uh, it does not work for uh, concave or uh, it, it works for including polygons and everything. Second uh, problem will be do you use uh, discrete collision detection or do you use continuous. So, the, what, what do I mean by that? Uh, Discrete is when you at every time step you check whether there are any collisions or not. When you check at T 1 you check at T 2 right, but there is a problem with that. If you have a bullet and a wall you check at T 1 the bullet was here and T 2 it has crossed. So, you miss the collision right. So, you, what you need to do is continuous collision detection you need to extrapolate the movement of the bullet and the movement of the other body and whether they are going to collide or not. So, if you want to be really accurate and you have uh, if you if your speeds are fast more higher than uh, let us say dimensions of the bodies you should switch to continuous uh, collision detection. So, I want to show you what I have been able to achieve. So, first of all this is the sun and earth model I have already created this because their values are really uh, elaborate. So, let us uh, first solve this using Ranjakutta method. So, the time step is again one day and if you see the orbit it is sort of ok, but if you switch to let us say Euler's method you will start seeing those errors right. So, Euler's method is simple, but please do not use it it is really it is it is really horrible. Uh, the second demo I have is now, this is a ok let me just remove this or I can create the simulation from scratch. So, I add a box I change its angle I change its dimension then I add a pin I attach the pin to one end of the box there is already oh I deleted the box. So, if you see there is already uh, the earth gravity is already on. So, there is uh, gravity pulling it down, but the constraint is uh, will reject the movement downward movement. So, there is it will create a torque of its own. So, what happens when I click play? So, you start seeing those velocities in acceleration and it starts oscillating normally. Okay. 
now as i said uh, use uh, first of all let me show what what if we don't use drift correction so energy will be conserved but gradually the body will start drifting in the vertical direction because gravity is always acting and we are only uh, solving uh, numerically so let let it run for a few while uh, You see this drift happening, right? Uh, what if I again enable drift correction? It will immediately pull back to the position because the there will be extra force pulling it back to the. So this is required to keep it in valid position. Now, what if I was not using velocity model for constant solver? I'm using a force-based constant solver now. So what happens is every time the position is getting uh, wrong by some amount, which means increasing potential energy. So the amplitude is increasing and the simulation is unstable. You see that this is not realistic. So well, <laughs> So again, uh, I have I've been I've added particles, disk boxes. You can define forces like constant force, weight force. You can even define custom forces by writing a JavaScript function. You can have springs linear motors, circular motors. Uh, in the earth and sun model, you saw that a tra trajectory was being plotted. So that was a tracer that you can attach to any point on any body and it will trace the path of that uh, point. Uh, you can display values and these are the joints. You anchor will reject every every movement. Pins will allow only rotation and stick will uh, uh, enforce the distance to be constant. You can add more constraints like ropes and pulleys and gears and but that's to do. So, yeah, basically that's it. Thank you, everyone. All right. Um, so, yeah. that's pretty cool. Uh, we have time for one question. Uh, are you using any uh, library for uh, uh, doing all the physics and math calculation here? Are you using any library? Uh, uh, well, I'm using numeric.js just for the linear system solver. Everything okay. else, the, all the differential equation integration and everything is from scratch. Okay. Because I wanted to first learn and second I wanted to be accurate rather than fast. Okay. And what about all the rendering? Is, is it all CSS? No, it's just canvas. Canvas, okay. And just normal canvas, there's no library. Okay. Okay, guys, okay. big round of applause for Nilesh. Thank you, everybody.